Jake Mason is a musician and a founding member of Cooking on Three Burners, an Australian funk trio best known for their song This Girl, which became a big hit in 2016 after being remixed by French DJ Kungs. And he's here just now. How are you today? I'm good, man. I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. So how would you describe your music for people that haven't really heard you before? Right. Well, I mean, Cooking on Three Burners, we started off playing lots of jazz and Mm. we're a trio so three of us so i guess think you know we started playing jazz and then we've somehow ended up being remixed into the mainstream pop you know (laughs) so it's a bit of a journey but i guess um you know we're we're always twisting and turning but you know we always try and find ourselves in the kind of funk soul uh world a little more you know that's that's our sort of home yeah and because maybe your most popular song is a remixed version does that annoy you that maybe people aren't familiar with your more funk sound generally no it's actually quite cool because Mm. it kind of gives us another another side i mean when we do gigs we don't really do we don't play you know edm sort of music we we play our funk and soul so um it's great that we've got kind of lots of different sides um and, you know, a lot of people come across from listening to that song and, and find out where where we're at and they dig it too. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So what was your earliest memory of music, really? Oh, earliest memory of music. Jeepers. Well, you know, growing up, we always had a piano in the house. And so it was, you know, one of those things where the piano was um, always tinkled along when you went past it and then kind of grew from there, you know, and um, and most of the other guys in the band, you know, we've always, always sort of had music around the house. So I think that's really important. You know, we, it didn't just sort of drop on us you know like when we were in our our teens or anything we, we always had it going on so yeah and when did you decide that you wanted to do music professionally probably in high school you know like when i was you know in my early teens uh you know what well, kind of was having so much fun playing music that i um i thought you know i'm either going to give this a really good red hot go yeah. or you know do something else I, I mean, I tried a few other things, but but music always was there. And so I'm, um, yeah, super pleased that I followed it through yeah. and still following. <laughs> yeah. And did Cooking on Three Burners come quite early or were you in maybe other bands or solo stuff before? Look, oh, yeah, Cooking on Three Burners came when we went to, to music university together. You know, mm. the, the three of us were uh, all studying at the same place in the same time. And, you know, we were needing to pay our rent. So we're like, hey, let's just do some gigs. And so we were doing these little cafe gigs and paying our rent and that's pretty much how it started so i mean that was early on in my i guess professional career um and it's been great i mean that band's nearly you know 24 or 5 years old now so yeah. it's been um it's been gone for a while <laughs> yeah and this is one of those rubbish questions but i want to know the answer where did the name cooking on three burners actually come from ah cooking on three burners well obviously there's three of us uh-huh. and you know we're cooking and we're making <laughs> we're making music but there is a Actually, there's a there's a, a jazz record by a guitarist Tal Farlow that's called Cooking on All Burners, oh. and we you know we appropriated a little smidge of that as yeah. well. So it's a combo, you know. Yeah, and I like the fact that there's no G at the end of cooking. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no G. You've got to have the apostrophe in there, you know, or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, and of course, the most successful charting song was the remix of This Girl by Kungs. But what's the original story behind the original version? How did that song? actually come about yeah well we wrote that song back in 2008 for a record um that we were working on at the time and we Mm. were just you know we were writing tunes to that record and you know our main aim was just to write songs that we loved you know we weren't kind of trying to chase any chart topping hits or anything we were just writing soul tunes that we love and that was the sweet soul tune that we had on the record that um yeah came out um the year later 2009 and yeah we wrote most of that record in 2008 on um on a record called soul messen and um yeah it pretty much i mean it had a good we we pressed it onto 45 as well so it had a good good go of itself and then you know it, it then it sort of exploded in 2016 with the remix yeah and how did that remix actually come about well i think um so kung's valentin brunel um aka he um i think he heard it on youtube like you know how you have a a seven inch playing on the screen and you know someone had uploaded a a version of it so you know the 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 kind of funk and soul world had promoted that so much that it had come through to you know he was 
18 or 19 at the time. And so, yeah, yeah. It, it connected with him and he was like, got, got onto us and said, Hey, what, what do you think about a remix? And uh, mm. when we sorted out stuff and from then on, it was, yeah, it was exciting. Yeah. And what was your reaction when you found out it was topping the charts all around the world? Well, it was a bit of disbelief. I mean, <laughs> you know, where, where we are, you know, Australia is not super close to Europe, yeah. you know, so, so um, it started going up the charts in France and I vividly remember, you know, texting the other guys in the bank. Hey, are you, are you seeing this? What's going on here? You know, and it was pretty exciting to watch, but because we were, weren't there on the ground, it was a bit surreal, you know, you know, yeah. it, it, it definitely didn't do what it did in Australia. What, so you didn't do, do what it did in Europe in Australia. Yeah. So we were only kind of getting it when we logged onto the internet and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think it was massive in Europe because I think the first time I heard it, I was travelling around in France and maybe Belgium as well and then came back home and still heard it. It's one of those international songs. Yeah, it was a bit of an earworm, which is, yeah. you know, we, we love that. <laughs> yeah. Do you prefer the original or the remix? Oh, that's a tricky question. Well, mm. they're kind of quite different, you know. The, the original is much slower. It's this sweet soul kind of thing. And it's got a chorus in it, whereas the the remix has got a different sort of chorus in yeah. it. Um, so you know they're quite different. And look, I love the remix because what it does it it brings that organic summery flavor that mm. we had in the original, but puts it right in the middle of the pop world. Whereas you know the original version is is very much in kind of you know late sixties kind of sweet soul world, which is yeah. also where I love. So <laughs> I love them both, but mm. I, I couldn't choose either. <laughs> does your accountant prefer the remix? Oh, the accountant. Well. You know the, the the remix you know has a lot more appeal, so it gets mm. a few more spins on Spotify yeah. than the original. But you know, hey, yeah. we can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently in 2016, this girl, the remix was the most Shazam song of the year, or something like that. Yeah, I guess that's um in was in the dance category, not the total you know most Shazam song, but mm. in the dance uh, dance song, you know, it was, and that was uh I think that was when Shazam was kind of almost at its peak of yeah. like people. Were using it going wow how can i check out a song and that you know wow this pot you know new technology is amazing so um yeah i think we caught the peak of that one that was pretty cool yeah definitely so of course a lot of your songs have featured singers on them don't they so how do you actually get the chance to work with these people oh uh, yeah i guess that, look i never really thought about how we do it mm. we I mean but that's kind of a bit of our our mantra is you know because we're a trio and essentially we're an instrumental trio you know we play instrumental funk songs and deep funk songs um but you know we always like to get singers in or various different other kind of guests to work with and so having guest singers is the best way to i guess keep it fresh for us you know we work with different people and it makes it exciting and we you know write songs for different artists because we think you know they'll they'll you know they'll like a certain thing and so yeah i guess that's that's our motivation but how we actually do it it's just a matter you know we just kind of pick up the phone and see if they want to do it (laughs) yeah who would be your dream collaboration then oh the dream well i'm gonna i'm gonna be a bit bit quirky here i would have to say james brown would be our dream (laughs) collaborator you know like you know it's never gonna happen but um Mm. you know that man was just amazing with with what he did and so you know we're pretty influenced by the the whole funk scene James Brown so yeah yeah, he would be our ideal well you never know they can do all sorts with technology these days can't they so I know they can (laughs) yes holograms everything (laughs) and in terms of people you have collaborated with have you got any favourites I know it's hard to choose it is a bit hard I mean (laughs) we love we love collaborating with Kylie Aldis and she's Mm. she sang this girl you know and uh, I actually just saw Kylie a few days ago uh, and she's just released um, her most recent record Um, so yeah Kylie's awesome we love working with her but yeah we love there's there's so many guests that we work with so yeah i'm, I'm not gonna say i've got a favorite yeah are there any people that you would maybe want to work with but you think wouldn't actually work with your sound but you still sort of admire them out with that yeah i mean i guess you know we it is it's quite fun to juxtapose you know say like a rock singer with a, a funky jazz kind of backing and and sometimes you know it teases things out like you mm. never imagine would be there so like i always do like that i idea of you know crossing over to the genres that you would never think that would be quite um that would work because they they actually often they do Mm. but not always yeah (laughs) so what is your actual process in writing a song oh well we have a few different processes but Mm. the the kind of the real fun one is when the three of us are in the room and we just literally jam and we play yeah and 
when we feel like we've got something going on, we'll, you know, someone will press record on their phone. So at least we, we don't forget it. <laughs> and we just, we just have this organic way of just, you know, working together and, and, you know, the song kind of comes out from the mist mm. and then, you know, we'll start refining it. We'll come back a couple of days later and listen to the things that we've done while we're jamming and kind of start picking the best bits and putting them together. Yeah. You know, it's a bit more complicated <laughs> than that. But, you know. yeah. And you record a lot from your home studio, don't you? Yeah. So everything comes from our studio here in Melbourne, yeah. which is where I am yeah. right now. Um, and, you know, we try and record pretty much live to, to analog tape, which gives us a wow. bit of that, that kind of you know good love yeah. and um and then we and then obviously you know we're not immune to modern technology we definitely yeah. use um uh, that to our advantage and we put in the computer and do all sort of funky stuff with it in there and mm. yeah yeah and recording at home i guess the pandemic won't have really changed many things for you unless i guess there would have been times where you couldn't perform together yeah well i mean unfortunately melbourne is i think it's got the uh it's the, got the prize for being the most locked down <laughs> yeah. city in the world which means that yeah we really haven't even i mean it's it's we all have our own home studios but we haven't really been able to get together all that much yeah. so it's been tough i mean we've started doing some gigs lately but um you know we we're definitely uh we've got a lot of ideas on the bench that we need to to work through in the studio and mm. we're literally only just getting back in there now so yeah and is there anything coming up in the future that if you've got any gigs that you might be doing or any future songs well you know we had we had a tour to the uk and europe you know planned in 2020 and that mm. obviously fell over and so we're i guess we're a little bit tentative about when we uh we put our foot back in but yeah. you know as soon as it feels like things have settled down a smidge more um you know we'll definitely be back and do a bunch of club shows because we love touring and, and traveling um but on you know until that happens we'll be just in the studio making more music you know mm. that's our plan and hopefully another record not too far down the track yeah definitely well where can we keep up to date with you and listen to all your music and things yeah well i guess you know if you if you're old school and old fashioned yeah. you know go to your favorite record store and mm. and look for some cooking on three burners because we've got lots of 7 inches and lps and if they're not there, you know, talk to the person behind the counter and tell them to get them in, you know. Um, but but if you're more on the technical uh, side, you know, jump on the streamers. We're on all that sort of stuff. And social media, we're, we're, we're kicking around there too. So, you know, come and say hi and drop us a line. Great. Well, many thanks for coming on the show today. It's been great to talk to you. Thanks, man. Well, thanks for having me. I'm glad we could um, finally hook it up.